I do apologize for the lighting. I'm like leaning back out of the sunlight because the sun is starting to set so it's at a really harsh angle. Like if I come here you can't even see my face because it's so like over bright. <laughs> the ladies underpinnings patterns from Margot Anderson for this. The bum roll is so simple and so quick. I might not even make a mock-up of it. If I do a mock-up, it's just for the sake of making sure that I can stitch it effectively. I, I don't know if I'll stuff it. If I do, I'll just use regular quilt batting. My plan for the main one is to use a bunch of the leftover fabric in my cabbage patch to make <laughs> basically taking all of the strips of fabric that can't be used anywhere else and cutting it up into tiny 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 pieces and using that as stuffing because that is a period way they would do it along with like sheep's fleece goat goat's fleece any sort of fowl down goose down but i'm not stripping a bird of its feathers the bum roll is a crescent shaped pad worn around the waist to support the skirts and make them spring out from the waist creating a softly domed shape to the skirts. The bum roll also helps to support the weight of the skirt by spreading it out over the hips. It is not actually known whether the term bum roll, which is somewhat impolite as far as Eliz the Elizabethans were concerned, was even used in the 16th century. Our first recorded reference to the term is early 17th century. It has, however, become the accepted term for the garment in question, and so we use it here. Bum rolls have also been referred to as hip pads, rolls, or bolsters. I'm going to guess that bolster was probably the preferred term in the Renaissance, but I don't actually know when any of these terms came into use. Some writers suggest bum rolls were not commonly worn, merely the stiffness, layering, and pleating techniques used in, per in period garments gave the skirt their shape, but the bum roll generally gives a better line, so we encourage it. This pattern is extrapolation, as there are no surviving examples of Elizabethan bum rolls. This is based largely on a 1595 woodcut of ladies dressing for a mask, in which one lady is being put into a very large bum roll, which we believe is what was commonly called a French farthingale, and became popular in the late 1580s. It is our belief the earlier bum roll was probably a smaller version of the eventual French farthingale. Stuffed items were filled with a variety of materials from unspun wool or cork pellets and even bran. We recommend polyester fiber fill as it is lightweight, easy to use, inexpensive, and unlikely to be eaten by insects. This is also fair. Particularly moths, cockroaches, and silverfish are a seamstress's worst enemy bug wise. The ties can be made of self fabric, ribbon, or we recommend cotton twill tape. Just avoid anything satiny or slippery as it will easily untie. We're gonna trace off the bum roll, which will be nice and simple. <laughs> have a bunch of extra bits of fabric here. I'll try shoving into it. So that's a bit more what it will look like. I will tilt this back up. Move Marie a bit closer so you guys can see. And then the bum roll, which I'm crudely pinning shut. I almost stabbed myself in the process of doing so. Bum roll will sit here. And keep in mind the form is not Sybil's size, so it's a little difficult to really get the sense of how this will look. But that'll effectively be from the front, and there it is in the back. The other reason the form doesn't quite work is the form does not have a rump like a real person does. But you kind of get the gist of how that will look before the overgarments are put on. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a silly word. Yes, it looks strange. It does. You're not wrong. It's another craft stream. This is crafting stream number eight. Holy crap, you guys are good. The main focus tonight is cutting up 
all of these scraps from cabbage into coleslaw. We are making the stuffing for the bum roll, partially because I kind of don't want to have to drag Jerome all the way in here just to sew the bum roll, especially because do the two stitching lines for it are gonna be so quick that like we would be sitting here doing the coleslaw all night anyway. There's my scissors. Yeah. <laughs> cut up coleslaw. But it's probably not gonna be enough to actually fill the cushion at this point. Probably what I'll do moving forward is just like each night take whatever I've collected and go ahead and cut it up preemptively just so it's a bit less work in the future. We have gone through the process of mocking this up and the farthingale is done. So now we are going to press on with the bum roll. As you will have seen in the Farth and Gill video, and based on some other footage probably repeating in a couple of spots, this was originally gonna be part of the Farth and Gill video and I decided that I would make them separate videos. I have the pattern here. I've used this lovely sort of stars and stripes US themed fabric here. I have dark blue top thread and a red bobbin thread. And I'm just gonna stitch the two layers together. I should have, where is it? Yeah, I have the spot along the outer curve marked where I need to stop the stitch in order to leave room to flip it right side out and to stuff it. You all saw me cutting up a bunch of the cabbage into coleslaw on stream. I will be cutting up more this evening probably because I doubt what I have is going to be enough, but it's Monday, it's a movie night, so I'm probably gonna do that while we watch our movie. So this will probably be done late tonight or into tomorrow. I do have a dentist appointment tomorrow. So if I'm not done tonight, this probably won't get worked on again until tomorrow evening, depending on how I feel. If not tomorrow, then early Wednesday. We will we will press through and, and get this done as quickly as possible. Let's, let's get these two layers to stitch together. That is one thing I forgot to mention. I'm gonna cut some ribbon to stitch into the seam line at the ends. I'm probably going to measure two lengths that are half of the waistline measurement that I need. So 16 inches for each one. That will be more than plenty to ensure that this has enough excess to tie at the waist. So let me cut the ribbon and then we'll get this stitched up. correct way I had it going where it would have been contained inside rather than sticking out so I have cut it off because I did not feel like redoing the stitch my machine is acting up I took the bobbin area apart and cleaned it out as best I could but it's still being a little bit iffy on some stitches so I may need to get it serviced so I don't want to stress out the machine and try to push it any further than I already have for the evening so I just cut the ribbon off where it was stitched in which wasn't very much to begin with because again I kind of did it wrong so now I am turning it out and I'm using a I'm not sure where my point turner went so I'm using a knitting needle to push the uh, corners out where they need to go. There we go. And I will just hand sew the ribbon to the end there. But there's a nicely turned point there. And I'm gonna get this flipped and then I will go sit cozy on the couch while I stuff this and work on cutting up any more cabbage that I will need to stuff this as fully as possible. I'm gonna double check the instructions and see if there's like any instruction on just how thick it should be. Like if it should be full but flat or if it should be rounded. So I will check that. But yeah, now we just stuff it and sew it shut, add the ribbon and she's done. So here it is flipped out. It's a little bit <laughs> wonky, but obviously that's also why we stuff it to have it keep its shape. But yeah, there's our unstuffed cushion. <laughs> stuffed and I got the back stitched up here and tied off my thread there. It's pretty firm. The instructions said to stuff it about as firmly as a ripe tomato and I think I pretty much got it. This is the finished, well almost finished bum roll. So I've got my two lengths of ribbon and I'm going to attach them at the point ends there with some back stitches, just some nice strong stitches. I also noticed a few spots. I noticed one big spot on this cut of fabric before I cut it and then didn't realize there were some other smaller spots, but there were several points of this 
piece fabric that we're actually slightly torn somewhere in the middle and there's a few of those along where the seam is so I'll probably really quickly just like whip around those with some thread to reinforce it but y'all don't necessarily need to see that but yeah just gonna attach the ribbon and she's all done <laughs> bum roll which also completes all of the undergarments for my ensemble. I am quite pleased with the firmness and the shape and size of the roll and it's sitting quite nicely right at the waist, right at the top of the hip so it will do absolutely finely to hold my skirts out a bit more and create the correct silhouette to be appropriate for my time. I will say Illyrian has a knack for finding interesting material to use for these pieces, but of course all of these are undergarments as I said, so they will stay hidden beneath the finished dress once it is complete. As this does complete the undergarments, the next step will be my skirts, of which there are three parts, the underskirt or petticoat, the full part, and the overskirt, which is the outer piece, which will be probably the grandest bit. I have a feeling many of thee will quite enjoy seeing the finished outer skirt and bodice. Once again, we thank thee ever so much for watching and do hope thou wouldst show thy love by using the various buttons or links placed around the video to do so. If nigh else, we do hope thou wouldst subscribe if thou hast not already done so and turn on your notifications to be sure that you are notified by our speediest couriers whenever a newest video is posted. If thou wouldst see more content like this, we have a place playlist linked in the cards and description of all of Illyrian's costume and sewing adventures, where at the very least thou shalt find the rest of the saga of building my clothing. If it is desired that thou shouldst follow Illyrian's adventures elsewhere, thou will find a link tree portal below in the description as well. And once again, as always, we would like to give a special thanks to Illyrian's coven of patrons who continue to be her biggest supporters. And if the dearest viewer wouldst join their ranks, check that link tree portal again for her Patreon, which begins at one dollar a month. Gramercy once again, stay tuned as mentioned for my petticoat as well as more gameplay footage and we shall see you all again very soon. Keep aiming my loves and anon friends. Oh, <laughs>